first half as we're back on the pistols i mean at least we had this matchup be still neck and neck despite the map change up but a, a lot of very dire rounds that that were very one-sided in comparison to what we saw on fracture to say the least things i really want to highlight those final four rounds last time we saw blue gold really have their their plan figured out by the, the the final two i believe it was attacking rounds for them previously where they they run the final two then they, i believe they won two more as soon as they went on to the defending side that's on fracture this is the first time that we actually see rounds traded back and forth with csp actually being the team to get two rounds rather than the one on the trading pattern but a very quick disable from the ko and they're going to go for a rotating this is is a five-man push on the side of blue gold we saw them go for the five-man push onto the a side of fracture but they had a way to free things up a way to surprise their opponents this time that does not look to be the case worthless to find the opening frag onto duck rar as it's going to be an absolute chaos as we have the plant go down elusive elephants creeping up around two they know thick is up there it's just a matter of finding them it will be a kiro with the sheriff to eventually find it worthless now sending those guiding lights spike has been initiated 5v3 time ticking down if you're scanning out it is going to be if they are able to work in combination or if the frags will get the better well, so far, it looks like the frags of the defense is going to be way too strong. 10 is the only one left, and I believe their Nanostorm has already been destroyed, so they have to just rush into the fray. Two versus one. And there goes that spike still being brought down. Worthless gets off it, though, instead of sticking it. And this actually could be a win by 10 They just have to hold on for a little while longer. And by golly, Binks, I think they've done it. Blue Gold, once again, they get away with robbery. And for once, they end up winning out the pistol round. Fellow, every previous conception that I've had, any any statistic that I've looked at, I think this round, th this game has proven me wrong on every single account. Map pick rates, we were proven wrong. Operator, or sorry, agent pick rates. Not this round, we weren't proven wrong as much, but Fracture, we were definitely proven wrong with what we would have been expecting. And does that mean it, it's the wrong choice? 110% no. It, it means that these teams are bringing something interesting to the table, and especially on a pistol round, that's exactly what you want to see. It gives the winning team the ability to now push up aggressively. This is something we never have seen Blue Gold have the ability to do, as they are just cleaning up the site. Porg finally able to find one with a classic, but they will get directly flashed out by KO. Joined by Elusive Elephant, they can have an uphill battle to fight. Running and gunning will be thick. Refragged by elusive elephants. They'll find two to their name. Only two to go. They might be able to find a rifle. And once again, in a round where we think there's no hope, elusive elephant manages to find one. Well, you got the stinger, which you can kind of play in a mid range depending on if you want to go and actually aim with it. Spots out one of the pieces of util to stop that defuse, but there's still a nano actually pop there on the spike gets caught on the rope and will not be able to stick that one down 10 10 gets aggressive and actually manages to cut elusive elephants down on the wire out of all places blue gold managed to get their second round on that second half as well it was expected though they did have the smgs but their aggression because they understood how much of an advantage they had there was just marvelous to see perfected by them moving on to the third round of the half Blue Gold knows that they are going to be playing at a disadvantage. You can see making sure that they have the rifles. They survived with two of those Spectres, and that's why you see 1010 and Rudolph respectively holding on to them. They're playing a very safe and passive angle. However, that's not exactly what you want to be seeing. You, you want to see that they're buying enough to have the ability to spend next round, but they're playing the long game. And as they flood into sight, they know that the close corners are gonna be their best friend. Decker to find one. That's two rifles now shut down as Akira's down. Plant being successful. Pushing up will be worth this. They have the frag. That Viper smoke getting caught on screen means that it will not be able to deny the line of sight. All these players on CSP are getting lit up. And this could be a bonus now on the side of Blue remaining. Gold, giving them the three round oh. advantage. Elusive Elephants last oh. alive, and they'll all upgrade to rifles on a flawless round. 
you know, I was going to mention this earlier, Binks. Having 10-10 win that 1VX when the spike was down on the first, second half, I mean, I thought that was a mental chalker, but that has got to be, like, up there for CSP. We have seen them play the long game countless times, but I think we're beginning to see the fact that we're in the later bits of the night here at NECC. I think we're beginning to see that problem reveal itself, especially for CSP. They allow Duckrar to get so incredibly aggressive, and even against Rifles, that Spectre was more than enough to deal the damage to get two opening picks, and then Thick lands a one-tap headshot with the Sheriff. I mean, talk about just outright just one-upping your opponents really for blue gold and they are just looking to continue this pain train they might get aggressive once again for a full five-man split leading into b as they want to get this plant down as early as possible because these are the positions that have been favoring them time in and time out on their offense positions are going to be exactly what you need. Akira thinking they have the right position, but look at all of that vulnerability with the new changes to box. Sprays out long angles, especially with these rifles. It makes sense if you're going up against a marshal, you might not be the most advantage, but it doesn't mean you are out of the fight. Viper wall on the side of blue gold is going to be down. CSP will also come down. Lucid find one, duck are three on the round, four on the round. They're looking for the ace. Just keep bringing them up to 10, as well as a four round advantage. They're looking for it, and the ace from Duckrar. Fellow, you keep mentioning the mental shockness. How, how shocked the mental must be an ace. That just hits, that hits home. That hits right where it hurts. I think the one thing that Blue Gold has against CSP is they, they have a slightly more mobile team. They've got a more set and forget uh, piece of Utah to work with. And, and that I feel like that just allows Duckrar along with the rest of his team just to get even more aggressive than what we anticipated. I felt like personally Blue Gold, especially on Fracture, they were a much more rotate based team. And they're doing the complete opposite of what we had seen on Fracture, but at least with the one thing they need to be successful in terms of just finding those kills, they are managing to pick up that slack almost every single time, and not even just Duck Roar. Dalton on the Sage gets that opening pick, and Thick will manage to double down as well. A five versus three off the rip as Blue Gold are once again looking to put themselves up in another post play. Spike planted. Plant completed inside of Blue Gold. I believe this is now the fourth time in a row. Worthless spraying out off that guiding light. But here's the alt or the null command on the side of blue gold that makes pushing up even harder as board doesn't have the utility use worthless able to spring up and find a second and a third oh my goodness what a headshot they brought the round back wait wait they have to deal with both of these nano swarm grenades they won't even able to shoot one out this means worthless has to continue pushing up while the viper of elusive elephants goes to the cubes. They will stick it out trying to get it to half. I don't even think they got it. And no worthless is in basically a worthless situation. They are not able to recover anything. Looking for the guiding light. Goes in the wrong direction. The quick refrag from Rudolph. Once again, insult to injury. That is five. Pound it five consecutive rounds for blue gold on the attacking side. And that was such a good time to pop the Null as well for Thick because Worthless had their Seekers. If he was able to pop that at a, at a better time, right when they were near Heaven, that could have actually allowed for a very feasible retake because we didn't see that fallback fully occur by Blue Gold. But because they were suppressed, they couldn't pop their ultimate. They had to just bombard into sight that allowed the fallback. And it, and I guess Worthless was thinking in their mind, hey, I, I can't really pop these Seekers because they're just going to have natural cover to play towards. I have to get hyper aggressive, and I can't even do that fully successfully here. So a very good use of the ultimate there by Thick. And once again, the innate aggression. It's favoring Blue Gold for the 80th time at this point, I got to admit. <laughs> It does seem like history is repeating itself, but when it, if it ain't broke, fellow, you ain't gonna change it. All right, I think that's a really w good way to look at this. Duckrar able to find more frags, believe it or not. And with this, in, in a deja vu position, it looks like Blue Gold will learn from their mistakes as Duckrar is going to eliminate Worthless this time. We'll lose an elephant with the judge in hand. We'll spray with the plastic. Duckrar to find four. We're gonna up to 33 and seven. Match Fellow, point. I don't feel like doing math, but that is an absolutely absurd KD to the point where I'm getting out the calculator, unless you can do it faster than me. No, I, I think we might as well save the 
the last bits of enjoyment here for you and those calculations. Thank you. Thank you. Very 4. concerned 7. about CSP and their jumbled buy once again. I thought they would try to save fully on that last round, uh, but apparently not. So now they, they've got a couple of, of odd weaponry. You know, the Ares, I, I'm, I honestly don't hate. Neither do I hate the Spectre, though. It's really hard to find some certain wall banks here on this map, so I don't blame them not bringing the LMB. That's like the main quirk of an Ares or an Odin is how easy it is to wall bang with those guns. So we're not going to see it this time about. But, but CSP losing six rounds in a row. Not any success on their defense as Blue Gold are just taking the charge once again. I mean, what's stopping them from making it seven in a row, Banks? The fact that CSP is going to be putting their foot down and saying, if they can do it, so can we. As we saw that on the first half, it's just a matter of them doing it again. However, Duckrog does want to say otherwise. Hunter's Fury will shut down Dalton, but they've already gotten the plant. Ducker looking for their third on the round. They are absolutely unstoppable, but Rascal's Bladestorm will prove me wrong once again. But we're used to that, fellow. All these players are used to that. What they're not used to is the pressure of match standing. point. Thick. Going to be able to find Rascal. Korg now last alive. They are searching for their team, trying to keep them alive. They need this win here today. But no, Thick wants it more as well as the players of Blue Gold Esports B as they...